Hey there, Allie Cooper here, and I'm going to give you a little demo of my passion app, Cirque Plus, as well as what it looks like from the dashboard. So you'll get to see what it looks from a user experience and then also what it looks like on the back end where I create it. All right, so let's jump right in. Um, this is my discover page, so my um, subdomain. So which is really nice about passion apps is not only are you getting like a mobile app for people to use on their phone, um, you also get the content on a subdomain. So if your content is something that people might be more like likely to use on their computer, they have that option to look at on a desktop or tablet, whatever. Okay, so I'm just gonna go up to learn. And these are all of my programs. Do, do, do. So I have a lot. I've been doing this for year and a half, a little over that, so I've been adding to it as I go. What I started with though was the six week challenge. So during my the 30 day expert unleash challenge that I did when I first signed on, this was the program that I created. All right, so let's take a look at how like I assign pricing options to each of these because people can buy these. Some are one time, let's see, like the six week challenge is a one time payment that they get access to this kind of welcome one as well as the Cirque Plus Home, Cirque Plus Bar, and Cirque Plus Vertical. So all of those are bundled into one one time pricing option. Um, I also have just the, the Cirque Plus Home Bar and Vertical programs as a subscription. So people can also just get that on like a monthly subscription. Um, and then yeah, all of these are one-time purchases. So let me show you how I set that up in Passion. All right, so this is my Passion.io dashboard. I'm gonna go down here to, I need to move my little bubble, pricing, pricing plans. So you can see these are the um, plans I have on subscription. These are the prices. Um, these two have a seven day free trial, bills every month. And what's nice about this Passion Payments URL is if you're granting, like if you're selling your program externally, either through PayPal or Stripe or cash, like whatever, you can just copy this link and send that to your client and that will grant them access to that specific program. Over here, it shows my one-time orders. So um, I have some like free options that I'm only giving out. Um, on a case-by-case -case basis. And then here are all of my one-time purchase options. Again, I could always send that to people. Um, or it's like, if I have a, an external payment um, system and like upon completion of when billing is received, it can redirect to this link so they can get access immediately. All right, so what it would look like if I was creating a new plan. We'll just do this together really quick. Um, you can enable community and user tracking, which I'll show a little bit later. I only use like activate these for like the higher ticket thing, things just so it can be like an added bonus that I can have a higher price point with. Um, so if I wanted a course, let's just say randomly of these three things, like a bundle of my three standalone signature programs. I'd select which ones I want, come down here to next step. It's a one-time payment. Let's call it the Cirque Plus Ultimate Bundle. <laughs> and let's sell it for $4.99. All right, shifts in this. All the signature Cirque Plus programs. Um, and then I would just hit create plan and then it would show up in the um, one time offer um, section. So it's as easy as that. I don't want to create that plan. Um, let's leave that. Um, so yeah, that's how I kind of organize my different pricing options. And some of them are free, which I've created as a one-time. So like the phrase vault, I just create as a free program. 
Um, and you can also set free content within a program. So if you want like the first lesson of a program to show up as free as kind of like a teaser for that program, you can set that as well. Um, so what I want to show you next is within these, for me, I find that there's two main um, ways I'm utilizing um, the widgets <laughs> within the builder. Um, so first is the sequence builder. So the sequence is like, would be great for just like a workout that people are following along. There's like a list of items and they're literally just clicking through. So what that looks like, let me just move myself over here. Um, so my first lesson. So the ones that look like a little book, those are lessons and the ones that look like this little lightning bolt those are sequences so i'll show you both um the this lesson i've just kind of created a list of the workout overall so it's a combination of text and videos that just are kind of an overview of what people can expect when they do this workout um this is another way um so it's just... I'll show you another one, but and I'll, I usually am just using text and video and photos in these, but there are other widgets that I'll show you when we look on the developer side of it. Okay, so those are lessons. Um, here is what a circuit looks like, so it kind of gives you an overview, and then when people start, it gives them a countdown. and it shows you the exercise. These videos are all in like two to five second loops, so you don't need to like record a ton, they just go on <laughs> forever. And then when people do the number that's noted, they just hit next and they're on to the next exercise. Okay, so that's how I'm using that. Um, let's see how that looks, how I set that up. All right, so let me go back to products, courses. All right, so let's just say I'm in preview mode. I have to be in edit mode to be able to do anything. All right, so let's just look down at the bottom here. I don't want to mess anything up, so I'm going to go ahead and clone this vertical 2.18 so I can mess around with it and then delete it when I'm done. Um, okay, so let's look at the lessons first. This is going to have to move. Here we go. All right, so. These are already here because I just duplicated it, but let's look at the bottom. If I wanted to add a widget, I can click the plus and it shows me my options. Come on, computer. All right, so image is something like this guy here. Video is like the one above. Text, files, I've never used, but I guess if you want to like include a guide or a PDF, you could use that. Let's just see how it works. Let's try it. Insert widget here. Yeah, so you can upload any of those things. Let's try something. Let's just bring, what do I have on my desktop? Just this like random image. Let's see what happens. Of course, it's not supported. <laughs> um, all right, I have a PDF. We'll drag that guide in and see what happens. Okay. It just shows it there at the bottom. Cool. All right, so that'd be a good thing to like if you had a guide, a follow along guide, or different resources that go along with your lesson. Um, you can have a stopwatch. Let's see what that guy is. This isn't one that I use, but let's see. I mean, I guess, oh, I guess you just hit start and it times you. That's kind of interesting. Don't know if I'd use that. Um, all right, so type form is a cool one. Um, you can insert a form. 
Um, I'll show you that in a different lesson in a second. You can insert an audio file and do something with Calendly. Maybe it's like for booking externally. I've never used that one um, either. But I'll come back to the type form one because I have that in a different um, lesson. So let's just navigate out of here. <laughs> Let me make sure I delete that guy so I don't forget. Oh, and how to do a, um, a sequence. Let's do that while I'm here. Um, so before I start, I collect, like, especially for a sequence, I have everything, like all my content and assets that I need in a folder labeled very clearly. So when I go in to actually build these sequences, it's very obvious like where they're coming from. Um, and having like a, a naming system is so important. So this is what it would look like if I was creating a new lesson. My new awesome lesson. Demo for you. You can say about how long um, the duration of a lesson is. So like most of mine are like seven minutes. And here's where you select whether it's a lesson or a sequence. I already showed you a lesson, so let's go into a sequence. My new awesome sequence. Let's take a look. So you can either choose interactive exercise or a timed exercise. So timed exercise, I don't have my um, drive connected with any images, so it's going to be, we can't do that, but let's see what we can do. Um, click here to have a timed exercise. So say you wanted to do like a, I don't know, a squat for 30 seconds. Okay, you can upload an image, you can up upload a like, tutorial video, and you can upload that playback that I showed you um, before. You just hit save, and that creates your um, first thing in your sequence. So if I want to add one, so now say I want to do an um, interactive exercise, same thing. Let's say I want to do 10 burpees. So it's not based on time. It's a like, specified number. Same thing. I'd add all my assets and just hit save. And then when I'm all done, um, that's there. So let me just go out and delete all these guys that I've been messing with so I don't forget. And someone's like, what? <laughs> um... All right, so I'm deleting this second uh, vertical 2.18. But you can say, see as you're building, it's super easy to add lessons, to edit your workout, to clone, which I did to have a copy of it, um, and also to remove. So if you're smart about how you tackle your setup, you can be very efficient. Okay, um, let me go and find that um, example of a type form because that is pretty handy. I have one in, in this six week challenge. So in my weekly challenge at the end of each week, I have, it's like a welcome and it kind of outlines the lesson. So within these lessons, they're utilizing all the different widgets um, that I talked about, but specifically this one um, uses a type form. And if you haven't used type form, you should, it's great. So this is a form that I've created in type form and then I'm using this type form widget to pull that into my passion app. So it's a cool integration. Um, well, let me see it, even if it's in preview mode, let me see. No, it's not going to. But you go through, you, people have things, actually, let me look. I can do it in this one, in the live version. Give me one sec. I don't care. Um... So I'm kind of toggling back and forth from the developer account and my um, 
test account for my app. So again, we're, going, we're now in the user end and I'm showing you what the type form widget looks like. All right, so let's get started. Kind of recap. Okay, people can start. It prompts them to ask their name. And then it would actually, here, I'll show you. This is kind of cool. So I'm going to say, hey, my name's Allie. And then it references that. So it really personalizes it. It makes it interactive. Thanks, Allie. Can I grab your email? Test at test.com. Um, and then it asks, did you complete the first three workouts this week? Sure, I did. It was great. Were you able to complete any of the bonus material for week one? Yeah, I did some of it. And what did you love? It was awesome. What could have been better? Um, I could have been stronger. Do you have any goals? Uh, crush it. I love check-ins. Okay, that's submitted. Great, so that's a good example of how um, that works. The type form integration. Okay, the other thing that I wanted to show you is the community feature. Um, and this is kind of new and I just started playing with it. Um, how am I going to show this? Let's see. All right, so on the user end, this was the post that I had for my six week challenge. Um, if I click here, I just had kind of a thread going. Um, it's not going to let me, oh, there it goes and just kind of throughout the challenge um, people were checking in about how things were going. Um, here I have the opportunity to, it's a list of all of my users um, and I think if you click you can send them a direct message. This has changed, it used to send them an email so I'm glad that this has <laughs> changed. And now we can send photos too. Cool. Yeah. Passion keeps adding new cool stuff. It's kind of hard to like keep up with it, to be honest. Um, and then within messages, it's like one-to-one -one direct messaging. Sorry, my computer is struggling to keep up. So that's super cool. You can have a one-on-one -on -one, and in these messages is a great opportunity to kind of upsell your clients if they're really enjoying some content you can be like hey like by the way i also have this and you should buy it here's the link um so yeah this is just kind of an overview with let's see i don't think i do so this is back in my dashboard i find that communicating with my group I just do it through the app itself. Like I have, I use my same login um, that I have for my dashboard, for my developer account, and I just have my own app access. And I communicate with the messaging and um, the tracking, which I'll show you through that. So tracking is another cool thing. Again, is new. So in my last challenge, I had 19 people. And when they did a workout, they were asked to just say they did it and the, because the goal was to do three a week. So yay, people were doing good. Um, I can't show you on this because um, I think it's because it's my developer account and I can't do it. I can't assign. So I actually had a different account um, where I was Alley Coach that I just created for myself that I was able to participate in the challenge as well. But it's super easy. People can just note that they did the workout and I can keep track and keep hyping people up. So those are just a couple of the features that I really like um, in Passion.io. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out. Um, oftentimes, like if there's a feature that isn't obvious, um, there is a way to kind of work around and make it happen. So feel free to reach out. Um, I'm really enjoy the process of kind of doing a hacky workaround and finding how to make it work. So if you have an idea and you're not sure if this um, platform can support it, just let me know. All right, hope you enjoy it.